Uh, can you hear me? All right. Okay. Hi. Uh, 大家好啊， uh, 欢迎大家每周五的下午的五点半到六点啊， uh, 来这个我们的 consulting 君的时间，也是我们公开课的时间。啊、uh, ，Today we invited Charles. Okay. Uh, so we want to talk about the difference between double E and computer science, and、uh, how you feel about the Stanford study, and、uh, how it feels like you know, 学霸 Okay, <laughs> 又一个学霸。我们今天又请到了一个学霸 Okay. 好，那么我们先自我介绍一下，好不好 ，Charles？ 哦，好。哦 ，Hi. Ah,、uh, my name is Charles. I'm now a second year PhD student in Stanford Electrical Engineering, or double E. Um, um. Now working on brain machine interface, which is a interdisciplinary area between electrical engineering and neuroscience.、Um, so for my undergrad, I went to Tsinghua University in China.、Uh, back in that time, I was doing some completely different researches, and like directly after undergrad, I came to Stanford and started、uh, my PhD career.、Uh, well, but、uh, along the way, I may expect to get a master degree、uh, by the end of this quarter as well. Um, but yeah, that's like a side product. Yeah, that's the reason we invite you here because we have a lot of students. They try to pursue the double E or computer science, you know, the different major. So first, my question is, why Stanford? Yeah,、um, I, I I believe you got a couple of offers, right? Why、well, you chose right, Stanford? Yeah, right. So I got a couple of offer、uh, all across the United States, but then I chose、um, Stanford primarily because it's、um, vibe of entrepreneurship. Which I really like, and、uh, basically this whole、um, era of creativity, entrepreneurship, and trying to start something that is commercially useful,、um, that can be basically used in the real commercial world instead of just staying in a lab and come up with、um, theories and, and going really deep into that. Well, that's also important as well. Yeah, because double E,、like, you have to spend time in the lab, right? Right, right. But、okay. it's just my personal interest. I'm more interested in something that can be commercialized and, and really like a、uh, transfer of、uh, the technology that can be transferred into some useful.、Uh, Okay, and I believe like a lot of students and parents, they like to know you know more about what you learn with the double E and、uh, what's the difference between double E and computer science. Which、right. major is better? You know, what is the, which one is more promising in the future? You know, yeah. So would you like to share a little bit more about like the difference between、uh, computer science and double E? Yeah.、Um, so. Actually, maybe I'm still a little bit into the last question. But、uh -huh. another thing, very cool thing after Stanford, I,、uh, about Stanford, I only realized after I joined Stanford is the super low barrier between different interdisciplinaries.、Um, so, so, so double E and C,、uh, double E and computer science, or E and CS,、uh, don't really have that much boundary、uh, between each other in Stanford. But that might not be the case in other schools.、Uh, but generally, so what's the difference between E and computer? I guess a simple intuitive metaphorology,、uh, like、uh, a analogy, might be: doubly people make the computer, and CS people develop algorithms Software. and softwares on the computer. So,、um, so basically, double、uh, E part of double E is, is about algorithms. And data processing, and、uh, nowadays you also have you also have AI, machine learning. That's part of the E R W research track. But besides that, there are also like semiconductor devices,、um, circuit design,、um, and, and 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 for example, computer architecture, hardware system, okay,、um, and and also signal processing, information theory, which is completely different、uh, from what、uh, computer science people is interested in. So I would say.、Uh, and, Double E, as the name、uh, implies, is our engineers. Like we develop systems and、um, either hardware or software. Computer science is more like a science. They go into the say the math between algorithms and trying to come up with say faster and more efficient algorithms、um, to solve all kinds of real world、uh, model problem. Or sometimes this algorithm might just be of like purely mathematical interest. But is so that it's possible? Like yeah. So again, we、we'll、see. But is it possible, like, to you know, change major from double E to computer science, or from computer science to double E? Because we know, like, the computer science right now has become like super hot, and everybody trying to get into computer science. And now, because we help a bunch of students to apply for computer science, you know, it's even UC, as say, Santa Cruz, or San Diego, they become like very competitive. It's hard to get in because the major of computer science. So that's why we would like to, you know.、Um, Also, ask the parents and the students to be like more open-minded to choose the different major. So, can you tell us like how hard it is double E? Do you think like it's hard or no? Um. So generally, I think electrical engineering cover a wider 
range in the spectrum of mm -hmm. um, of basically modern electronics, mm -hmm. um, while computer is focusing more on the programming and, uh, and software side, as its name suggested. Um, but that's not being said. Double E people cannot do CS, or CS people cannot do Double E because part of them is actually overlapping heavily. Um, say the software part. So, um, say my roommate, he is his official affiliation with WE, but he his advisor is from computer science. His lab is in computer science. He is doing co a totally computer science things. Um, and there's no like a black and white boundary between these two anyway. Uh, but I would say, I think like that's just my personal opinion. So uh, I think WE would actually give you the freedom to go into CS while you also have many other choices to. Um, to, to say do hardware, do circuit, if you end up finding yourself interested in those tracks. Okay, so which means like WE has like a, um, wider or more choices, but computer science is more like a fix the path, right? Kind of, kind of like that way. Well, I, I feel like you also, you're also winning the national uh, champion of the physics, right? Physics. Okay, so, um, so we have a lot of students, they try to take the physics like national uh, competition or you know like a different like science part competition so uh tell us more about like the physics competition like the national competition yeah what, yeah. what kind of <laughs> yeah go ahead sorry. so uh so that was a way to go um a long time ago back in i was in high school mm -hmm. um so back in then i was very interested in physics and took uh took part in the national uh, olympiad of physics back in china um so on so on that competition i guess like it for me it's not a painful process to prepare for it actually for me it's very fun because basically what has been taught in my high school class just like doesn't satisfy my curiosity. You're um, lucky because you're in China, you're a train in China. But you know, like in the United States, you know, the students are not having the chance to get a train for their physics and usually they need outside help, right? So uh, that means like if our students need help for the physics competition, they can find your, they can find help from you, right? I will be glad <laughs> to provide advice or right. okay. suggestions. Um, yeah, but I would say for me, it's really a fun journey. It's like exploring a whole lot more outside of like the textbook in high school. And it really gives you the ability to think deeper into some very basic phenomena you see every day, but there is actually a beautiful and fundamental theory behind it. And that is even useful up to now when I am doing my graduate research because I am working in experimental physics labs now. Yeah. So uh, so basically the, the way of thinking back from that time and the good intuition I built it um, for physics actually is helping me a lot, even in my nowadays research. Oh, great, great. That's also the question I was ask, uh, about to ask you. Say, a lot of people think like the physics competition or mass competition is kind of like uh, belongs to the pure academic part. But I was asking like whether it's related to your future college study or, uh -huh. you know, PhD study, but you already answered my question. Definitely, okay. yes. Yeah, so we also can have like a, you know, like the students or online to ask question. If you have any question, you can ask. Uh, if you question, I would like to know more about like how you train yourself to be a, um, a good I would say like very competitive students. Yeah, is there any like oh. a secret, you know, or how you manage your time, how you manage your stress because you're facing the high school students. And uh, I would see like every student, they want to pursue like the computer science major or like double E or whatever the major and even they want to go for a PhD in the future. But you know, it's really hard, you know, regarding to study, right? How you manage your time and how you manage stress. Right. Um... Yeah, or you are I, just a gift kids that you don't need to manage. Uh, <laughs> I think it it, it it depends on different people. Like uh -huh. different people has their strategy. In yeah, give some tips. Lives. And for me, I think in a very short and high level summary of my, if you want to call it a secret sauce, is think deep. So um, basically, when I learn something, I really want to understand it like to the level where I can claim that like it, it becomes part of my intuition of the world. 
So um, whether it's in math or it's in physics um, or computer science, because like uh, as I mentioned back in um, undergrad time, I also took a lot of computer science uh, classes because like they're naturally overlapped. Um, and also economics, I also have a minor degree in economics as well. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't think it's uh, I wouldn't think it deep um, into the degree that I would consider it as part of my thoughts, um, part of my way of thinking, and so or you can call it internalized what you learn from textbook. So you, you will see I'm not a good note taker. I don't take a lot of note, um, and I don't actually spend a lot of time going through different problem sets um, again and again. Um, I think that's first painful and not the best use of my time. But instead, I would really like to have, say, one or two hours, just sit there, have scratch paper, like lay out uh, in front of me, and then write something, and then try to basically go through the idea again and again in your head, uh, in your brain, in your mind, and then you basically feel that it's, you, you, you fully master it, you fully internalize it, and then, I'll, uh, and then I'll call it a day and think that I am happy with this chapter of the book or uh, about this, uh, the knowledge of this specific topic. Okay, so that means like you are very good at finding the strategies for the study. And do you learn a strategy yourself or you figured out or you're somewhere else? Yeah. yeah, I think it's like naturally figure out along the way. So I didn't really start like this, you know, back in um, elementary school or junior high. Um, people were trying to teach you the way you, you, you study. They, uh, they, they, they told me to take more notes and go through more problem sets and, and, and such and such. Uh, I'm not saying that these are not useful techniques. They are super useful for some people, but it's just not my I mean, for team. a small amount of people, because we, I believe the same, you have to study smarter, not harder because you really have to figure out the right path instead of yeah. like repeating the same thing over and over again. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just, yeah, I'm just, sorry uh, to interrupt no, you. But yeah, I'm just saying that's not my cup of tea. My cup of tea is to basically, I would naturally incline to spend more time thinking instead of uh, spend more time reciting or writing. So yeah, uh, that's just my way. And I figure out like naturally a lot of way of so many years of being a student. Um, and I guess everyone is kind of feel the, feel that um, basically appealing or the, 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 the incline in their hearts of telling them like what's the best strategy that you, you mostly want to do and when you are most efficient. I see. Um, so yeah, just give it a shot. If you really want to do it in some way, give it a shot and see the result. If the result is a positive feedback, then keep going on the track. All right. Okay, so we have one of the question here. They say, what's the difference between uh, the education system of Stanford and the Tsinghua? Well, that's a very good question. Though basically, you're competing the two two colleges right now. Yeah. So, what do you think about the differences? Okay. I mean, uh, location different, <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> what else? Yeah. Um, I would say, I I, 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 I might not be the best person to answer this question. I've only been in Stanford for one year and a half, and I've uh, been in Tsinghua for four years. But uh, one thing I perceive. Uh, through basically my experience in these two school is I think um, Stanford gives you more like freedom or options to plan for either your academic path or your career path or basically it it, it assumes less about you. Mm -hmm. You are in you are responsible for designing how you want to spend your several years. Um, in Stanford. Uh, instead, in Tsinghua, um, you will receive many guidance. Now, I, I, I'm not saying that one way is superior than the other or inferior to the other, uh, but I'm just saying in Tsinghua, you should expect to receive more guidance in the sense of academic or even wow. like daily um, behavior. Uh, but the, the other side of the story is like you are in some way more limited to the framework that the school uh, assume you should follow. So it really takes a lot of, um, say, efforts or even courage um, to try to try something else. While in Stanford, like, because no, no assumption has been made about you. So I guess here you will enjoy more, <laughs> say, say, say so you, you will enjoy more freedom to plan for your future. But in another way, you can more easily screw up yourself at Stanford. Okay. In Tsinghua, it's like a baseline, a baseline design framework for everyone, which will work okay. Like if you follow it, you'll end up with a like uh, mid-class uh, mid comfortable life, no well, problem at all. Um, like, so that's like a safe baseline. 
yeah, at least like Tsinghua still want to do something, right? They, they want to do something. They want to educate their students. So basically Stanford doesn't want to do anything. So I told my students, the Stanford is not going to train you to be an awesome student. They just want to select awesome students, you know, which will be successful no matter what. And they want to take the credit. Yeah. So <laughs> you have to be awesome first and then they chose you and then they take your credit of your success. Right. But Tsinghua still want to train you to be successful. Right. So that's the difference. Okay. So let's check on the second question. All right. So the second question says like, uh, um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, so, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm not the one biggest judgment, but uh, the only thing I can say is my work is appreciated to some degree. Okay. Yeah. Great. So, great. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Uh, you're pretty humble too. Uh, so I have another question. So if we, if you could, you know, let's redo the high school again. Yeah. So what do you want to change? What do you want to change for your high school? If you can just take a second chance. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I would. Or no change. Um, I would probably spend more time time okay the attention this oh. is an important thing because we're high school students you want to know what he wants to do the high school right yeah okay so you want to spend more time on um computer games really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. or less time on computer games <laughs> um I, I i would spend a little more time uh in my personal hobbies or uh hobbies or interests i kind of have a feeling that like basically i live in my high school at undergrad every step as planted um by the established system and i don't really give much uh, myself too much like um freedom or leisurable time um well that probably in some sense helped me to get into um who i am today but in, in that's the, the point that's the point yeah. you know the students in the united states they have like a lot of time and some kids they really want to go for their you know yeah. personal hobby and they spend a lot of time on either computer games or like the sport something yeah. and then they don't really like to be trained or do the test of prep you know go over it practice you know so that's kind of like opposite way but yeah, that's but, the reason sometimes it's hard for them to get into the Stanford, right? Uh, I mean, you get what you pay, uh -huh. and as long as you're happy about it, that's mm -hmm. great. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay, So cool. Yeah, so... So we have another one. Say, which research is Charles Chen doing? What is research you're doing right now? Okay, yeah. So um, in a very short summary, my research is... Uh, very complicated. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's actually not complicated. Okay. I, wanna, I, I like to put things um, intuitive. Okay, great. So my, my research in one sentence is developing artificial retina to help the blind restore vision. Wow. So basically, we have a photovoltaic um, for the guys who are probably interested in technology a little bit. Photovoltaic is a device when you shine light on it, it will generate current. So we basically uh, implant a photovoltaic array into the subretinal space of the blind patient and then use um, lasers, safe lasers, to selectively stimulate pixels on that array to help the blind restore vision. Wow. That's what I'm doing. Wow, that's really changing the world, changing the people's life. That's cool. That's, that's cool. our hope. Yeah, so if, you, uh, if someone like our students are interested in this kind of like industry or field or would like to know more about the double E, you definitely can contact us so we can, you know, set up, you know, maybe a consulting time for Charles to give more guide or, you know, help the students. And also you also um, give the offer for the audience, say like uh, you can help them for the physics competition, right? If you have time <laughs> to find some time. All that right. will be something I enjoy as well. I know, I know. So you should share a lot of experiences and how you study, how you manage the stress and time with the students. Because when I'm working with the students and I realize that, you know, most of them, they have like, you know, great like um, motivations. They have big heart. They want to do something. Uh, but you know, like the culture difference and also the education system is quite different. So in China, when you were, at, you know, grow up, uh, they have someone to train you and lead you. Uh, you have to be successful no matter what. It's kind of like 
a little bit like pushing you, right? Maybe too much sometimes. But in the United States here, the education is kind of like different. They let you be who you are. Uh, I mean, they give you enough freedom to let you be who you are, but who you are, you know? Um, this is kind of like a, a big space for you to grow. So sometimes the students cannot be pushed. I mean, they're not pushing themselves. If they are not pushing themselves, it's going to be like lay back. You know, that's the words I would see. A lot of students, it kind of like lay back. Um, that's a headache for most of parents too, because you know parents were kind of like going through the similar system, but their kids is not. So this is like culture. I want to say like culture shock, but it's kind of the very different way for education. Yeah. So that's why we want you to share more about the feeling, like the question we asked before. What's the difference between here and there? And you mentioned a very good point, saying like you know the the Qinghua to train you guide you give you a lot of guidance but here they just like hey come here do whatever you want okay just do it you get a successful okay wait we offer <laughs> you the opportunity right so they took the credit okay all right so um yeah i think that's pretty much and uh, we're now having like um uh eight minutes we want people to give the uh questions so if you have a question you can just uh uh let us know uh Oh, someone want to ask your personal contact information. Okay, you can contact us for more information in the future. All right, so anyone have a question? I'm saving two questions for you, actually. Okay, so I'm waiting for the audience to give questions. Uh, let me see. Do you have a question for the for, for audience? <laughs> oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I don't really know who I'm talking to. So. <laughs> okay, so, okay, they are all parents and the students. Gotcha. Okay, so let's see if we have a one more questions okay i think they have one more question we missed they say study in stanford and uh, how you think stanford can train you to be a to be like outstanding well it's yeah so many kind of vague questions oh yeah. i think they try to ask you like how you feel like stanford can help you yeah, yeah. or in what way because when you mention like that they, they just give you more space you know freedom that means like they don't do anything for me okay for an educator i understand it that way okay so what do you think stanford helped you yeah, yeah what well, was that i would like to thank um him or her for giving me this chance to advertise in stanford but <laughs> I mean, actually everybody knows stanford everybody want to get in stanford but yeah what part yeah. maybe you can tell some like downside make people feel like oh my kids doesn't want to stand for anymore. Right, right. So one thing I want to emphasize, and I don't think it has been emphasized enough, mm -hmm. is um, the, the the very low barrier, uh, at, at least for graduate programs, very low bit, uh, barriers between the uh, disappoint uh, this uh, it inter sorry, the uh, very low barrier the, uh, between subjects um, and different disciplinaries. So uh, disciplines. Um, so essentially, how graduate program works in Stanford is that you will get three quarters. I mean, each quarter is one season, uh, somewhat equivalent to semester in other school system. So uh, you'll get three quarters of funding from the school, not from the research group you are actually working with. So you will be free to experience three different groups or three different fields before you actually make your final commitment of where you want to stay and spend your five-year PhD research career. Um, and that is actually a two-way selection process. Uh, you will evaluate a professor and his group and decide if you want to join. And meanwhile, the PI or principal investigator is, in, uh, is estimating you. Like, that actually adds a lot of pressure on first year and second year graduate students at Stanford because it's not saying you get into graduate program and then you are done, you're promising a successful life. That's not the case. You have a chance that by the end of your second year, no one PI wants you and you get kicked out. Mm -hmm. So I've seen students like experience that. That's a very sad experience. And that's a relatively um, high ratio. I mean, about like 20 to 30 percent mm -hmm. um, of students don't actually successfully match a research group and they get kicked out. But uh, the good side about that is um, you have to total freedom to redesign your research career. Um, it's like self-exploration, right? Right. After mm -hmm. you gain more um, information from different people you talk to, different programs you participate in, you will then realize, like, for example, myself. In my past, my undergrad time, I was working on information theory, um, or basically uh, signal processing. But then after I came to Stanford, I realized I, I am actually very interested in neuroscience, or at least some um, combination of electrical engineering and biology. And then basically I went into this group 
Um, say for example, my advisor now has no affiliate, uh, has no official affiliation with electrical engineering. So, uh, but that's not a problem at Stanford as long as the advisor think your work is valuable and you think you want to do, uh, do, do the work in his group, then you guys are matched. So, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. A lot of students feel like, you know, uh, getting in Stanford is the goal. Mm -hmm. or is the destiny but actually it's no. not it's just a, it's just a star exactly and also i have a lot of i mean more pressure if you think your high school is tired and competitive forget about it right try get in stanford and then try to the life after that right i haven't experienced american high school so i i i cannot comment on that okay but... i can share a lot of stories there okay so we have another question here say can you talk about how to prepare for the national physics competition yeah, I think we mentioned that. You didn't yeah. prepare. Did you prepare for that or you just enjoyed it? Yeah, I did, I did. Okay, how long you prepare I, I mean, for I that? I mean, I prepare in an enjoyable way. Okay, how, you, um, how long you prepare for that? Basically from my, I would say from a ninth grade. Let's see, if right now we have a students want to help for the physics competition, how long you recommend them to start from? Like, ASAP, always. Uh, yeah, but at like one year, six months, two years? Well, it... I would say it really varies uh, across level. different pe people, mm -hmm. but generally, if you want to say go into the national level, then at least two years of training should national be level. Okay, national level two years, and yeah. how early they can be? It's like a grade eight, no, grade nine, or even younger. As long as you get the math foundation that uh, enables you to understand algebra, the physics material. Algebra, calculus, in what level? Equations. Equations. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Hopefully we can answer this question. Okay. I yeah, think well, so. uh, I mean, that, that will be a whole spectrum of technical discussion uh, uh, around this topic. So probably okay. we can do another time or something. All right. Let's say, what is the... What is research in Stanford a high school student can get in about physics? And that's the question I asked you at the beginning, right? So like the, the lab intern, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what kind of research in Stanford a high school student can get? I so literally like the, the, you know, high school student cannot do the same thing like what you do, right? So what do you think, what kind of thing they can do? It depends on how qualified a student is. Um, I mean, he or she. In physics. Yeah, physics. yeah, in physics, right? Yeah, so um, research actually not only in physics, including computer science or EE, there, there, there is need for um, basically human source to do some fundamental, not too technically challenging, but, but not also, cleaning the lab, right? Not no, not cleaning the lab, <laughs> but say for example, cleaning data sets. Okay. So, uh, so for example, I do an experiment and collect a lot of data. Then probably need, uh, I I would need someone to come back uh, to 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 come after I me. I have some candidate spend, for you, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and spend some time, say, look at the data, and then use their physical intuition and think: Does this curve uh, is this curve reasonable? Um, if not, then what's the problem? Maybe I should discuss with the professor or the graduate student of the way they they work on the oh, pipeline, like how they actually collect data. Um, yeah, and also say for machine uh, for research in machine learning. Um, or deep learning, uh, there will be a lot of human labor required to classify the data set. Say, if you want to train an image set, then you better have some human label. Uh, say, these sets belong to some labels, and that set belongs to some other level, uh, labels. So these are all research assistant uh, positions um, that a lot of uh, research groups do, uh, at Stanford need. But I don't actually understand the administrative process behind it. Like, uh, if a non-Stanford affiliated person want to get involved and what he or she needs to go through. Okay, but I know that part. I, I can tell you later. <laughs> yeah, but okay. I, I would just say feel free to email professor. You can yes. find their email online and yes. then ask. If, but that's going to be a like, even challenging as I have a students like email the professor like by themselves, like hundreds of emails sent out, no, no response. Yeah. So you really need to know like when to start to contact them and to plan ahead. Okay. Well, also your background. Yeah, important. of course. Uh, so uh, they have one more question. Is it very hard to get a straight A in the courses? Uh, in undergrad course. Yes. Courses. And well, how about your courses? Are you still doing like the A, using A or B or two? Uh, so there's a different grading system back in Tsinghua, mm -hmm. but I guess in Stanford, I got straight A's. Um, so how about Tsinghua? You got a straight A in Tsinghua? Well, there's no such thing as A, B, and C as okay. in Tsinghua. But basically, if you want to transfer to B, A, B, C, I believe it's still straight A, right? Not really. <laughs> no, no, I, I scroll some classes in Tsinghua as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, but... Uh, 
Well, again, a lot of these questions depends on different people. Like some people might struggle to get a straight A at Stanford graduate programs, mm -hmm. while I think at least the classes I took um, are manageable. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. So time's up. Okay. So thank you so much for joining us to share more experiences with You're us. Welcome, and uh, so anyone who interested in to know more about the physics competition or, you know, like double E major and a computer science major, uh, will come to email us or contact us. And uh, I'm going to uh, send you guys the uh, website. So we're going to post it. Uh, articles regarding the research program and the summer programs and also you know different major how you choose it and our, our website and the resource section okay uh thank you again see you next friday 5 30 p.m all right thank you bye-bye thank you charles thank you. bye bye